Remember at the end of this video, that in the description part there are links to find additional information regarding the topic that we are going to expose. In this video we are going to see the pressures and operation of a cold room that works with gas. R404A Refrigerant. It is a kind of equipment designed for large-scale users such as supermarkets and storage centers. In this type of cold room the thermal load freezes. Important to their design is how quickly the cargo should be frozen. The power of this type of installations is higher. Low pressure present in freezing equipment for an evaporator temperature of minus 20 degrees Celsius about minus 4 degrees Fahrenheit. Here we have an absolute pressure of 45,276 psi. To know the low or evaporator pressure that the manometer would mark, we subtract the atmospheric pressure from the table value. In this way, 45.276 psi minus 14.7 psi is obtained. This subtraction results in a gauge pressure value of 30,000. 376 psi. To know the high pressure simply use the ambient temperature increased by 15 degrees Celsius and look up the pressure value in the table for example. For an ambient temperature of 35 degrees Celsius we increase 15 degrees to obtain a value of 50 degrees Celsius here is a 337,365 psi absolute pressure. To know the high or condenser pressure that the manometer would mark, we subtract the atmospheric pressure from the table value. In this way, 337,365 psi minus 14.7 psi is obtained. This subtraction results in a gauge pressure value of 322,665 psi. Now let's see the parts of this cold room 1. Evaporator 1. 2. Solenoid valve. 3. Thermostatic valve. 4. Electronic controller 1. 5. Oil separator. 6. Condenser and condenser fan controller. 7. Evaporator 2. 8. Electronic expansion valve. 9. Electronic controller 2. 10. Decentral compressor controller. 11. Double pressure switch. Now we are going to explain the operation of the electronic controller. We are going to focus on the evaporator 2. In the animation that we are showing on the screen, we have the presence of a system formed by two evaporators that frequently work with more than one compressor. Adapt to the cooling load on the equipment. Let's start with the basic terms. What is an electronic expansion valve? An electronic expansion valve, it has the function of feeding the evaporator with liquid refrigerant and maintaining a fixed superheat opening and closing time control valve. These electronic expansion valves are actuated by regulation by pulse width modulation which means that the time opening is controlled according to the needs example of these valves. The damp pose a KV series to achieve that any electronic expansion valve performs the regulation. A controller or electronic system is required that measures through sensors the evaporation pressure and temperature evaporator outlet what is an electronic evaporator controller. The main function of the electronic controller for the evaporator, it is to regulate the injection of liquid refrigerant into the evaporator too. The supplied liquid refrigerant, it is controlled by a signal from temperature sensors OR with a pressure transmitter 3. When working with an expansion valve of the AKV type, or of total opening and closing the evaporator controller decides according to the reading of the sensors the time that the refrigerant must be allowed to pass to the evaporator 5. The controller opens and closes the AKV valve. Based on the sensor readings the valve opening is independently adjusted so that the evaporator provides the optimum amount of refrigerant at all times by using a pressure sensor and a temperature sensor a correct measurement of the refrigerant has achieved superheat in any condition which ensures a very precise and robust control 8. Depending on the model of the evaporator controller, control of one, two or more nine evaporators can be realized. With the use of electronic evaporator controller, there is the possibility of increasing the suction pressure reducing electrical consumption 10. The electronic control of the evaporator guarantees the lowest possible superheat bringing performance closer to a system with a flooded evaporator 11. Depending on the controller model, control of one valve for one evaporator can be performed one valve for two evaporators, two valves and two evaporators and many other combinations 12. Depending on the application, with the use of electronic evaporator control you can choose between the following defrost methods a natural, the fans remain active during defrost, b e. electric, the heating element has activated, c hot gas, 
Here the solenoid valves are controlled, so that the hot gas can pass through the evaporator at this moment. We must remember that R404A is a refrigerant generated with a mixture of gases RON-134A, plus RON-125, plus RON-143A. The fact that R404A contains RON-125 and RON-143A both with high heating potential global it also generates a mixture of high GWP although R404A does not destroy the ozone layer the fact of having a GWP of 3000. 920. It currently causes problems with environmental restrictions that regulate those gases with GWP greater than 2500. Some alternatives to R404A, such as R407A, R452A, R449A, R407F.